Hi everybody, Kevin Longquist here for On the Pony Express, and we are here with our Hilltop visits on this significant day in SMU history, July 1st, 2024, when SMU officially becomes a member of the Atlantic Coast Conference. And how fitting that we are here in Dallas Hall, the signature building here on the campus of SMU. And we are pleased to be joined by University President Dr. Arjel Turner. Dr. Turner, thank you. thank you so much for being with us today. Glad to do it. Glad to do it. Let's start with this monumental day in this university's history of becoming a member of the ACC. And if you would put into context what this day means for this university and its future. Obviously, our communities look forward to this day for a long time. Uh, I got here in 1995, the last year that we were in the Southwest Conference. And so from 95 on, we've certainly been building up all of the infrastructure of things. And uh, it's just a, a great celebration of all the efforts that we've uh, put into our athletic program being matched with all the efforts that we've been success we've put into the academic programs. And so now finally, we're in a conference that we think matches our academics as well as our athletics. Uh, and so it feels very good, but it's a historic day. There's no question about it. I want to go back to the night before when North Carolina State flipped its vote to yes. There were reports of straw polls, if you will, indicating that there wasn't enough support. Could you share with us what you, the other leadership, David Miller, what you were dealing with on August 31st, with this kind of tension? Were you trying to lobby other schools? Could you lobby other schools? And, or were you just at the mercy of what that vote on September 1st was going to be? Well, in some ways, we were at the mercy of that vote, but uh, that didn't keep us from... Uh, Rick Hart was checking with a lot of ADs. I was calling presidents that I knew that were uh, sympathetic to us and supportive of us. And I know David was in touch with uh, some trustees and donors to some of those schools. And so we were very much trying to find a way that uh, we might encourage North Carolina State or even Chapel Hill uh, to change their vote. We knew that the other two wouldn't. And so the idea that we had to have one of them uh, was just overpowering. And so in a situation like that, you do everything that you think might be having even a chance of being effective and helpful. And so that's what we were doing. Uh, the three of us from the very beginning said, here are our groups that we're working with and uh, let's stay in touch. Did you all believe that this was SMU's last chance to get into a Power Five conference, given the climate of where things were going in college athletics? What did you all think of that? We never viewed it as the last chance, and I wouldn't view it right now as the last chance. There's just too much turmoil in uh, intercollegiate athletics. Uh, and so as a result, it was the best chance with the conference that we wanted in. And so we had talked before all this started, obviously there were three possibilities, and from the very beginning of that, David and Rick and I all in a conversation together said, if we had our druthers, where would we want? And we all agreed we'd be happy with any of them, but if we had a choice, we'd like to go in the ACC. And the reason was institutionally, we just matched more of them and uh, private institutions, high academic standards and so on. And so we, we wanted to be in the ACC, but we obviously wanted to be in one of the P5, A5, however you want to, uh, denote it, but uh, still it was, it was quite an opportunity for us. And the one thing that Rich Templeton said uh, as we were talking about, he's vice chair of the board, uh, various opportunities, and we were talking about financially or anything else, doing everything we could. And he said, what you don't want is three or four years from now, looking back and saying, well, I wish we had just blank. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't want to leave any stone unturned even if it wouldn't have been a very effective effort. When you know that something's coming, when a vote is coming at a certain time, you just have to work to right up to that moment. You, Stanford and Cal, joined a conference where there isn't 100% unanimity between the lawsuits between the ACC, Florida State, and Clemson. I won't ask you to speak to that, but does this university feel a sense of urgency to prove itself in order to help strengthen itself, but also the ACC, because of what's going yeah. on behind the scenes? Well, I think it's important for us for a lot of reasons to, to be as strong as we can, as early as we can be. Uh, I don't think any of us think that uh, uh, the competition isn't going to be stiffer. Our schedule next year is probably the toughest schedule SMU's had in 30 or 40 years. Correct. Yep. And uh, so as a result, it's going, to be, it's going to be hard. But basketball, I mean, if you look, we had eight championships this year. 
which tells you that we've got the foundation for a, a very competitive presence in that whole conference. But that doesn't mean that we'll win it, but it does mean that we intend from the very beginning to be competitive. And I think that's important to the ACC, and it's also important to SMU. Uh, there's, who knows what's going to happen in six months from now? I mean, uh, I've been working in intercollegiate athletics and leadership areas for 40 years, and I really hate that it's come down to a lot of this, mm -hmm. but it has. And so you don't rue the day, you try to get in and be effective. Uh, for the day that you're living in. You were speaking of a few moments ago about looking at the three different conferences, like if we had the choice, where mm -hmm. would we go? But the interesting part about the Pac-12 situation was the fact that in early August of 2023, it looked like you were on the precipice of joining that conference and then their media rights deal fell apart. What was that like to go through that? Because the, the reports were that if they'd gotten the media rights done, that you were pretty much going to walk into that conference as a member of that. And so just it had to be a strange feeling, but maybe now good because you were still having those discussions with the ACC. Yeah, and it would have been more disastrous if we weren't involved already with the, the ACC and, to, and it, to some extent the Big 12, but, but uh, it would have been a lot harder. But frankly, it was sort of Big East deja vu, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since uh, we've been through something like that before. And so that makes you even more uh, concerned about it. But uh, that Friday night that they took the vote, from all indications, the next day we'd have been a member. And uh, when it started kind of uh, unwinding, well, then uh, it just made us very quickly say, okay, we've got to. Uh, we've got to work even harder and work with our consultants on, on how to approach the ACC.